Okay, our next step. This is the moment that we need our star. I love what we have done here so far. I hope your star is just as good as this one. And it should be. Okay, what we do now. Every star point seam is in fact a mark. I know we have marks on the pattern, but even if there are no marks, every star point seam is always a mark in your pattern. So even if you forgot to trace them, don't worry. We do have marks in a spiky circle. Remember that we make those little marks here and here. They will match with your star. So the first thing what we do, we need our pins. Oops. And there's my star point seam. And the star point seam and my mark, they will do very well together. And as you can see, that little tiny mark, less than an 8 in your seam allowance, is more than enough to give you a good idea. Okay. When I pin, I always pin perpendicular on the seam. And there's a reason for. I know that you have the feeling that you want to pin it this way. But if you pin perpendicular like this, you have the chance to see if she's really in the center of your spike. If you put your pin this way, there's no way you can see it. And I can tell you, it saves you a lot of repinning, restitching, because now you can check it before you stitch it. Now I go to the next one, and again, there is my little mark, there is my seam allowance. And again, I pin base my pin perpendicular and I try to eyeball a quarter of an inch and again I like to check her but now you can see that she is a little bit off she is a little bit too far to the right and I know it is a smidge but for me I'd like to have her the seam allowance a little bit more to the left so it really makes the difference that you can check your seams before you stitch her. Otherwise, we have to sew it. Is it okay? No, she's not okay there yet. I think she's a little bit better now. So I can go on to the next one. So this is what we do with all the pins, with all the seams. And it gives you a good idea how to do this. I will pin them. When I have pinned them, I will baste them with my machine. I will use a regular stitch. The marks are important. And because this is an offset circle, it really makes the difference. They are not in the center of the spike. Only the first one is in the center. And again, your mark and your star point seam are going together. And I always try to eyeball a quarter of an inch. These pins are so nice to work with. They are so nice and bendable. Bendable, bendable. I'm Dutch. I make mistakes. I have an accent. And you know, when I have my courses, I always say that. But I think my Dutch, my English is better than your Dutch. Before 2007, I was not able to speak Dutch. English. English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blooper. <Bridget>. Blooper. <laughs> okay, so what we have done so far, we have pinned the eight star point seams on top of the marks. And now, our next step, we will stitch them. We will baste them so they will be stabilized.
they cannot be shifted, they cannot be moved and that is a real good point because the only thing we have to do when we have stitched the star point seams and the marks together is the space in between but you do not have to worry anymore that they will be shift. Now we will baste with the regular stitch lengths. I have a two and a half on my path and I will um, baste the pieces, the star point seam. Okay, I take This is more than enough. So what I do now, and every time I've done one, I will stitch them. And I will check them, and I go to the next one. Needle down, now I can take the pin out. When I stitch, and that is also an important thing when you make circles, the flat surface is always on top of your machine and that means that the star is on your machine. And again, if one shifts, it doesn't matter because that's why we based. We just base so we can take care of that before we stitch our entire circle. Maybe you have the feeling that everything what you have to do takes requires a little bit of extra work. And maybe it is. I have the feeling that the final result with all the little tips and tricks are so much better. Okay, now we have pin based the intersections of the star point seam and the marks on top of each other. You can see the little tiny stitches over here. A stitch length to two and a half, just four or five stitches, more than enough to secure the area that you are, um, that could shift. Our next step, we will pin the star into the circle of A2. I already started and I'd like to show you the pin basting. You can see several layers. Just pin it. And you can see all the way around. If I look at the other side, I have to do this. I have to do the other half, but I already like to show you the reason why we did this. Now you can check your points before you stitch it. And again, if you pin your pins this way, you're not able to see it. So you have a good side. It gives you a good feeling how they look like. And I'm very pleased the way the star will fit in my circle of A2. So we will finish this and I like to show you how I pin based. So what I do, I put my fingers behind the piece here and I stretch the fabric a little bit. So now I line my piece in and I take one of my pins and because those pins, those clover pins, are so bendable, bendable, I never know. Flexible. Okay, Bridget. Flexible? Bridget is recording this. And again, you can see small pieces, more than enough. And it stabilizes the seam already. And you can check it. Yeah. Oh, that klinkt niet goed. That is Siri. <laughs> Shut up Siri. Shut up Siri, yes. <laughs> okay, put your fingers behind the piece and you stretch the fabric a little bit and you can ease it in. Hold it in place and again pin baste the pin. It really makes the difference for the way you will stitch your circle and again I have so many little tips and tricks to help you to accomplish this challenging quilt. I really think that we can be so successful together. So give it a try and use the little tips and tricks. Yes, everything requires a little bit of extra time. 
but you will love it because people will admire your work because that's what we do. You did it. You have done these quilts. And maybe you never thought that you can do it. But together, we can. To I heard that before. I know. Together we can make these quilts. So, everything is pinned, and what I do now, I will check it. I will check my points. And I think I can work with this. And even when one of the points is cut off, I only have to take out a couple of stitches if necessary. You also can see that she is already nice and flat in the circle. And again, that is part of the pin basting. So my next step, what I do now, okay, what I do now, I need scotch tape. And there's a reason for, for the scotch tape. So what I do, Bridget, would you, okay, what I need is a little piece of scotch tape here. And I take this over this area. And there's a reason for, because when I stitch, My starboard seams could flip and if I put my little piece of tape here I avoid a problem like that. So I will start here and for me it doesn't matter where I start because I have to stitch the entire circle but if possible bring down the speed of your machine and really take your time. What I also need is my seam ripper. And when I see those little corners what you see here I try to push them away back into the seam like this. If I leave them away, I will have a little corner in my circle. I don't want that. So if I bring down the speed of my machine and I use my seam ripper, you can use many other seams, a satay pricker. Satay pricker. Have you, do, do you know what it is, a satay pricker? Probably not Dutch. So needle down, take the pin out. And it gives me the time. I use a regular stitch. I do my little back stitch. And I take my time. If you take your time, it really avoids a lot of unpinning. So this is what we do with our entire circle. On the blue fabric underneath. I take the pins out when I start, when I stitch. I will come back when I have finished my entire circle and I will show you the results. Now next step we'll be pressing the circles together and we press the seam into the direction of the star. But first, I will stitch my circle and then I will show you the final results. Okay, I have finished my circle and... Okay, the moment of truth. How will she be? So the first thing what I do now, I will check my points. How are they? Are they okay? Did I cut them off? And if I look at this, I think I could be happy. I think I'm fine with it. So what I do now, there's always one step that I do before I press it. I prepare my seam with my thumbnails. So what I do and I can check the points even better. And I finger press the seam of the star into the star, just like this. It's just the little thing that I do before I press it. And I can check every point. And I have the feeling that the final result of my star circle 
will be even better. What I always do when I press my star and my circle on the right side of the piece, I put a little piece of kitchen towel, um, toilet paper on the center of my star. And I always have been afraid that I will damage my star circle. So if I protect her, if I protect the center star, uh, the center of my center star with a little piece of paper, I have the feeling that the final result will be so much better. So you can see, even without pressing, you can see that she is nice and flat and that we have a beautiful circle. We have some beautiful points. And I'm very pleased with the way she turns out. So the only thing I do now, I will take my little piece of paper, kitchen towel, toilet paper, even a piece of fabric will do fine to protect the center of my star because there is a lot of bulk underneath. And then you can see I have to cut my thread. You can see that my center, my seams are into the star. The most natural way for all the seams on this side is to go into the star because we have much more seams on this side than in the star. So this is what we do. A nice press and the first part is ready. Okay, what I did, I found a piece of my paper and I placed just on top of the center because this is the fragile point. This is the point that will burn. So what I do, a little piece of paper, it doesn't matter, just protect her. And then I use a little bit of steam, just a little bit to make her nice and crisp. Very gentle, very, very gentle. You can see she is nice and flat. So this is what we have. I will turn her this way for you, Bridget. Gives you a good idea how the star will be. But look at our circle. I think it is a very, very nice circle with the points on the right place. And that was not that hard, was it? So this is what we do with all the circles that we have to attach in, um, in flying geese, in spikes or in a solid background. You always pin base, always pin the marks from a star and the marks from the background piece on top of each other. See, uh, sew them and then you pin base the rest. And it really makes the difference. That pin basting is an essential part of this quilt. So let's give it a go.